Okay, so I'm Carl. I'm a California co-founder architect and co-founder of Studio KO. And we, uh, we opened Studio KO uh, almost you know, a little bit more than 20, uh, 20 years ago. First in Paris, our first office, and then the year after in Morocco. And I'm Olivier Marty, the second co-founder of Studio KO. I'm the O, he's the K. <laughs> and we've been uh, working with um, uh, the ACDF Foundation, which is a foundation in charge of art and culture in Uzbekistan for a few years in a, in a center, in, an, in a cultural project in Uzbekistan, in Tashkent. We're designing for them a center for contemporary art um, called the CCA, uh, which is a, a, a contemporary project in, a, in, a, in the old industrial fabric of the uh, 1910s and um, we've been knowing them and working for them for, for more, more than two years. So gradually we got to know them and we got to know the country. In addition to that over there, we're restoring some vernacular houses uh, to transform them into artist residencies, which in, in gave Tashkent, in Tashkent, in the Mahalas. which gave us as well a good uh, sense of um, Uzbek vernacular. So we, we really made many trips and after speaking for quite long about being involved in the Biennale, we felt that for us it was the right moment when we had enough knowledge or legitimacy to do it. Uh, it was for us the right moment. We needed time to understand and listen and look uh, and be able to propose a vision or an encounter with um, Uzbek. And how has been this process of, of connecting with the Uzbekistan culture? Yeah, I think it's um, by many um, discussion we had with, with them, by many um, trip we, we had there, by all the people we met, like uh, craftsmen uh, people we, we met during our trip, and all that thing at the end, it gives us a, a really good uh, idea of the, of the country itself, of its uh, roots, of its um, culture. So. Um, for, for At the end, it become like um, an evidence, I think. Yeah, but it's really based on, we're very curious. Uh, so there was a very strong curiosity from both of us, from our team, to understand far beyond uh, any projects we were given, like from cuisine to marketplaces, of course, architecture, landscape. So from the first day, we, we felt there was something very strong in this country, in next, um, a uh, very mixed character. Uh, these countries are really a mix of four or five civilizations. It's very strong and we felt um, that we wanted to know more. So we read a lot, we visited a lot, we, and with a lot of uh, curiosity. And because they're very proud of their country, they're very um, supportive and, and, and moved when someone shows an interest for the country. And how is this um, translated into the curational project from the pavilion and how is that materialized inside? Well, it's materialized to, I mean, the, the first big thing to explain probably is part of, the, of this pavilion installation is, is at the very heart of it is a, a workshop and a collective work with 25 students, architecture students from a university in Tashkent. And the first thing they did in the workshop with Yuka is they visited the Kalas, which is a pre-Islamic architecture dating from, you know, thousands of years ago, which are bases of fortresses. And the first thing they did is they went on a trip to visit this, to understand it and experience it. So it all started with these structures, which are almost labyrinthic in the way they, you can walk through them. Um, and then it all started. And all along this trip, we asked the, the students to work on the curation of the, of the pavilion itself. So um, the idea maybe was to, uh, to give them some, some tools to, to go there to, to, to see this callas maybe as a, an inspiration and then work together on the shape, on the design of the installation itself. So what you see in the pavilion is the result of this uh, two workshop because Olivier had another one in Bukaha and more based on the materiality, materiality itself that you find as well in, in the pavilion. So it's a mix of all this work together that we show, uh, we show there. And we have a strong relationship and interest forever 
uh, from Morocco uh, on the brick and, and, and on, the, on, on how beautiful one module can become anything. The combination of one module is absolutely infinite. So my workshop the second week based on materiality was also based on the module of the brick and, uh, and, and the infinite variations that are possible while composing them and as well on the glazing in, in, in Bukhara uh, where we tested the limits of the glazing and we did some experiments with them. With the master ceramist? Yeah, yeah. with an amazing guy called Abu Bay. It's the workshop and the, the artist we invite uh, during this workshop to work with, with us. This whole thing for us is a kind of laboratory. That's the way we, we want to illustrate the theme of the, of the Biennale. Just sit together and talk about culture, art, history, go make some trip with the students, all that, uh, doing some experimentation on the glazing of bricks, all that for us is a, a kind of laboratory because it's really experimental. And at the end, what we see is the result of all this. So it's a laboratory. And, and for us, the future is not necessarily or not only in a technical new uh, invention and technology, but as well just to look back and see what is behind. So it could be, modernity could be a mix of, of all this. And we want it as well um, to be very simple and basic almost like the future, maybe in the future we will still build, but in a different way, maybe smaller, maybe using recycled elements, but we were not very comfortable into going deep into perspective, speculative, because this is not who we are. We're more really practitioners and we build and we use some very crafted traditions and techniques. So we wanted to share something extremely simple. Three walls, what can you create in terms of emotion? And to us, the future could be this as well. It's not necessarily the end of the world. It will be different, it's challenging, it's, it's, it's upsetting, of course, but we wanted our response to be a bit positive and sharing emotion in this world of thinking. And in, inside the installation, it is, a, it is like a scenography, but it's based on the senses. It's about the uh, dim lighting, uh, getting lost, being exposed to this, to this video. I think we like the idea that uh, architecture is not always thinking and explaining and justifying, but it's just feeling. Just, uh, and the first sense ever is, this, is the touch. There was this uh, amazing Finnish architect who was saying like, uh, um, every sense is tactile, including vision. Every sense is, is tactile. You look with your fingers, you smell with your fingers. So the first thing you, that connects an architecture to your body is the touch. So we thought it was very important that you could be connected with your senses by losing any understanding of the place through obscurity and darkness um, so that there was a necessary moment of cleansing yourself of losing understanding of the space and then you go back into something and gradually after five minutes you see better um, which was to us the best way to prepare people to rinse themselves from informations and understanding and, 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 and start this in a virgin way almost. And what would you expect that the global visitors of the Biennale will take from them? Will take with them? Maybe least. just a feeling of something that just... Um, we, we, there is maybe not something really clear to understand. It's more about what you feel. Is it um, moving It's about or questioning not? rather than proving or yeah. demonstrating. It's about sharing an emotion yeah. and then seeing what questions would come out of that like uh, about simplicity about texture about modesty and and it's just about trying to share an emotion and and, and the questioning thank you okay thank you you're welcome thank you